Welcome back to Living Room Shakespeare. Good evening. Tonight we will be presenting Love's Labor's Lost and uh, our actors are waiting in the wings. But before we begin, a couple of business items. First off, uh, many of our actors consider the Center for Performing Arts in Rhinebeck to be their theatrical home in better times. Uh, so we ask that if you have the ability and or the inclination that you please make a donation to the center to help them make it through this winter, uh, either here on this post or on their website, uh, which is linked here in the post. So please feel free to head over there. They are also uh, continuing to put on uh, drive-in movies this month at the center. So uh, if you want to go see a double feature of horror films in your car, uh, safely, a distance from everybody. They will be having those uh, for the next couple of weekends. So check that out on their website as well. Uh, I would like to remind you that these are staged readings of sorts. Um, so we hand our script out less than a week before the show. Our cast gets their parts handed to them and then they show up here. We do not rehearse. We just tell them how we do our thing and off we go. So uh, they have brought all of their direction to bear on their own parts and it is amazing to see the magic that we put together. So uh, without too much further ado, I would like to remind you that we have one more show this season. Next week will be Macbeth. It will be at 10 o'clock, not eight o'clock. I will say it again at the end of the show, but we are excited to have some ghosts and murders and all kinds of spooky witchy stuff on Halloween. So that will be a lot of fun. Let's get to Love's Labor's Lost and some good, funny nonsense. So here we go with act one, scene one. Let fame that all hunt after in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs and then grace us in the disgrace of death and make us heirs of all eternity. Therefore, brave conquerors, for so you are, that war against your own affections and the huge army of the world's desires, our late edict shall stand strongly in force. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe still and contemplative in living art, you three, Barone, Dumaine, and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed, and now subscribe your names by his, that his own hand may strike his honor down that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do so, as sworn to do, subscribe to your deep oaths and keep it too. I am resolved, tis but a three years fast. The mind shall banquet, though the body pine. Fat paunches have lean pates, and dainty bits may make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wits. My loving lord, Dumain is mortified. He, the grosser manner of these woros delights. He throws upon the gross woes face of slaves. To love, to wealth, to pump, I pine and die. With all these living in philosophy, I can yet hear thee. Ah, my apologies, my liege. What I was saying, I can but say their protestation over. So much through liege I've already sworn. That is, live and study here three years, but there are other strict observances, as the seal woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there, and one day in a week to touch no food and but one meal on every day beside, the which I hope is not enrolled there, and then to sleep but three hours in the night, and not to be seen to wink of all the day when I was wont to think no harm all night and make a dark night too of half the day, which I hope well is not enrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep, not to see, ladies, steady, fast, not sleep, your oath is passed to pass away from these. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please. I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, Baron, and to the rest. I yea and nay, sir. Then I swore in jest. What is the end of study? Let me know. Why, that to know which else we should not know. Come on, then. I, I will swear to study so. 
to know the thing I am forbid to know, as thus, to study where I well may dine, when I to feast expressly am forbid, or study where to meet some mistress fine, when mistresses from common sense are hid, or having sworn too hard a keeping oath, study to break it, and not to break my troth. Studies gain be thus, and this be so. Study knows that which yet it doth not know. Swear me to this, and I will ne'er say no. These be the stoops that hinder study quite, and train our intellects to vain delight. Barone is like an envious sneeping frost that bites the firstborn infants of the spring. Well, say I am. Why should proud summer boast before the birds have any cause to sing? Why should I joy in any abortive birth? At Christmas, I no more desire a rose than wish a snow in May's newfangled shows. But like of each thing that in season grows, so you, to study now it is too late, I'm o'er the house to unlock the little gate. Well, sit out, go home, Baron, adieu. No, my good lord, I have sworn to stay with you. And though I have for barbarism spoke more than for that angel knowledge, you can say, yet confident I'll keep what I have swore and bide the penance of each three years' day. Give me the paper. Let me read the same. And to the strictest decrees, I'll write my name. How well this yielding rescues thee from shame. Item, that no woman should come within a mile of my court. Had this been proclaimed? Four days ago. Let's see the penalty. On pain of losing her tongue? Who devised this penalty? Mary, that did I. Sweet Lord, and why? To fright them hence that dread penalty. A dangerous law against gentility. Item, if any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. This article, my liege, yourself must break, for well you know there here comes an embassy, the French king's daughter, with yourself to speak, mild of grace and complete majesty, about surrender of Aquitaine to her decrepit and veteran father. Therefore this article is made in vain, or vainly comes the admired princess hither. What say you, lords? Why, this was quite forgot. Study evermore is overshot. We must have forced dispense with this decree. She must lie here on mere necessity. Necessity will make us all forsworn. 3,000 times within this three years space. Every man with his affects is born, not by might mastered, but by special grace. If I break faith, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. So to the laws at large, I write my name. And he that breaks them in the least decree stands in attainder of eternal shame. Suggestions are to other as to me. But I believe, although I've seen so many, I am the last that will keep his oath. But is there no quick recreation granted? I that there is. Our court, you know, is haunted with a refined traveler of Spain. A man in all the world's new fashion planted that hath a mint of phrases in his brain. One who the music of his own vain tongue doth ravish like enchanting harmony. A man of compliments whom right and wrong have chose as umpires of their mutiny. This child of fancy that our, mod, uh, that our motto height for interim to our study shall relate. In high-born words, the worth of many a night from tawny Spain lost in the world's debate. How you delight, my lords, I know not, I, but I protest, I love to hear him lie, <laughs> and I will use him for my minstrelsy. Armado is a most illustrious white, of man of fire new words, fashions, and night. Costard the swain, and he shall be a sport, <laughs> and so to study three years is but short. Which is the Duke's own person? This fellow. What wouldst? Uh, I myself reprehend his own person, for I am his grace Starbrow, but I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Senior Arm 
are commends you. There's villainy abroad. This letter will tell you more. Uh, sir, the contempts they're over is touching me. A letter from the magnificent Armado. How long soever the matter, I hope and God for high words. A high hope for a low heaven. God grant us patience. <laughs> to hear or forbear laughing? <laughs> to hear meekly, sir, and to laugh moderately, or to forbear both. Well, sir, be it as the style shall give us cause to climb in the merriness. The matter is to me, sir, as concerning Jacquinetta. The manner of it is, I was taken with the manner. In what manner? In manner and form following, sir, all those three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the form, and taken following her into the park, which put together is in manner and form following. Now, sir, for the manner, it is the manner of a man to speak to a woman for the form, in some form. For the following, sir? As it shall follow in my correction, and God defend the right. Will you hear this letter with attention? As we would hear an oracle. Such is the simplicity of man to hearken after the flesh. Great deputy, the Welkins vicegerent and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth, my soul's earth's god and body's fostering patron. Not a word of costard yet. So it is. I may be so. But if he say it is so, he is in telling true, but so. Peace. Be to me and every man that dares not fight. No words. Of other men's secrets, I beseech you. So it is with, so it is besieged with sable colored melancholy. I did commend the black oppressing humor to the most wholesome physic of thy health giving air. And, as I am a gentleman, betook myself to walk. The time when? About the sixth hour, when beasts most graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment which is called supper. So much for the time when. Now for the ground which, which I mean, I upon, it is eclepid the park. Then for the place where, where I mean, I did encounter that obscene and most preposterous event that draweth from my snow white pen the ebon colored ink which here thou viewest, beholdest, surveyest, or seest. But to the place where it standeth north northeast and by east from the west corner of that curious knotted garden, there did I see that low spirited swain, that base minnow of thy mirth, me, that Unflet, unlettered, small knowing soul. Me. That shallow vassal. Oh, still me. Which, as I remember, hight costard. Oh, me. <laughs> sorted and consorted, contrary to thy established proclaimed edict and continent canon, with, with, oh, with, but with this I passion to say wherewith. With a wench a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or for thy more sweet understanding, a woman. Him, as I, as my ever esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet graces officer, Antony Dull, a man of good repute, carriage bearing and estimation. Uh, me, and please you, I, I am Antony Dull. For Jaconetta, uh, so is the weaker vessel called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain. I keep her as a vessel of thy law's fury, and shall, at the least of thy sweet notice, bring her to trial. Thine and all compliments of devoted and heart-burning heat of duty, Don Adriano de Armado. <laughs> this is not so well as I looked for, but the best that ever I heard. <laughs> Aye, the best for the worst. <laughs> But, sirrah, what say you to this? Sir, I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? I do confess much of the hearing it, but little of the marking of it. It was proclaimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. I, I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with a damsel. 
Well, it was proclaimed, damosel. Oh, this was no damosel neither, sir. She was a virgin. <laughs> it is so very too, for it was proclaimed virgin. If it were, I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. This maid not serve your turn, sir. <laughs> this maid will serve my turn, sir. Sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall fast a week with bran and water. I had rather pray a month with mutton and porridge. And Don Armado shall be your keeper. My Lord Barone, see him delivered or, and we go, lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. I lay my head to any good man's hat. These oaths and laws will prove an idle scorn. Sirrah, come on. I suffer for the truth, sir. For true it is, I was taken with Jacquinetta, and Jacquinetta is a true girl. And therefore, welcome the sour cup of prosperity. Affliction may one day smile again. Until then, sit thee down, sorrow. Mm -hmm. Act one, scene two. Boy, what sign is it when a man of great spirit grows melancholy? A great sign, sir, that you will look sad. Why, sadness is one and the self-same thing, dear imp. No, no, oh Lord, sir, no. How canst thou part sadness and melancholy, my tender juvenile? By a familiar demonstration of the working, my tough senior. Why tough senior? Why tough senior? Why tender juvenile? Why tender juvenile? I spoke it, tender juvenile, as a congruent epithet appearing to thy young days, which we may nominate tender. And I, tough senior, as an appurtenant title to your old time, which we may name tough. Pretty and apt. How mean you, sir? I pretty and my saying apt? or I apt and my saying pretty. Thou pretty, because little. <laughs> little pretty, because little. Wherefore apt? And therefore apt, because quick. Speak you this in my praise, master? In thy condign praise. I will praise an eel with the same praise. <laughs> what, that an eel's ingenious? <laughs> that an eel is quick. I do say, thou art quick in answers. Thou hearest my blood. I am answered, sir. I love not to be crossed. He speaks the mere contrary. Cross is love, not him. I have promised to study three years with the Duke. You may do it in an hour, sir. Impossible. How many is one thrice told? I am ill at reckoning. It fitteth the spirit of a tapster. You are a gentleman and a gamester, sir. Oh, I confess both. They are both the varnish of a complete man. Then I am sure you know how much the gross sum of Duce Ace amounts to. It doth amount to one more than two. Which the base vulgar do call thee. A most fine figure. To prove you a cipher. I will hereupon confess I am in love. And as it is base for a soldier to love, so am I in love with a base wench. If drawing my sword against the humor of affection would deliver me from my reprobate thought of it, I would take desire prisoner and ransom him any French courtier for a new devised curtsy. I think scorn to sigh. Methinks I should outswear Cupid. Comfort me, boy. What great men have been in love? Hercules, master. Oh. Most sweet Hercules, more authority, dear boy, nay, more, and sweet, my child, let there be men of good repute and carriage. <laughs> Samson, master, he was a man of good carriage, great carriage, for he carried the town gates on his back like a porter. And he was in love. Oh, well-knit Samson, strong-joyed Samson, I do excel thee in my rapier as much as thou didst carry me, Gates. I am in love too. Who was Samson's love, my dear Moth? A woman, master. Of what complexion? Tell me precisely of what, what complexion. Of a seawater green, sir. Is that one of the four complexions? As I have read, sir. 
And the best of them too. Green indeed is the color of lovers. But to have a love of that color, we think Samson had small reason for it. He surely affected her for her wit. It was so, sir, for she had a green wit. Oh, you may do it in an hour, sir. Most maculate thoughts, master, are masked under such colors. My father's wit, my mother's tongue assist me. Sweet invocation of a child, most pretty and pathetical. If she be made of white and red, her faults will ne'er be known, for blushing cheeks by faults are bred and fears by pale white shown. And if she fear or be to blame, and by this you shall not know, for still her cheeks possess the same which native she doth owe, a dangerous rhyme master against the reason of white and red. Is there not a ballad, boy, of the king and the beggar? <laughs> the world was very guilty of such a ballad some three ages since, but I think now it is not to be found, or if it were, it would neither serve for the writing nor the tune. I will have that subject newly writ over, that I may example my digression by some mighty precedent. Boy, I do love that country girl that I took in the park with the rational hind. Costert, she deserves well. <laughs> to be wit, and yet a better love than my master. Sing, boy. My spirit was heavy in love. <laughs> And that's great marvel, loving a light wench. I say sing. Forbear till this company be passed. <laughs> Sir, the Duke's pleasure is that you keep Costard safe, and you must suffer him to take no delight nor no penance, but so must fast three days a week. For this damsel, I must keep her at the park. She is allowed for the day, woman. Uh, fare ye well. I do pray myself with blushing. Maid. Ma'am. I will visit thee at the lodge. Well, that's hereby. Oh, I know where it is situate. Lord, how wise you are. <laughs> I will tell thee wonders. With that face? I love thee. So I heard you say. And so, farewell. Fair weather after you. Uh, come, Jacquinetta, away. Uh, villain, thou shalt fast for thy offenses, ere thou be pardoned. Well, sir, I hope when I do it, I shall do it on a full stomach. Thou shalt be heavenly punished. I am more bound to you than your fellows, for they are but lightly rewarded. Take away this villain! Shut him up! Come, you transgressing slave, away! Let me not be pent up, sir. I will fast No, and sir, loose. that were fast and loose. Thou shalt to prison. Well, if ever I do see the merry days of desolation that I have seen, some shall what see. some shall see? Nay. Nothing, Master Moth, but what they look upon. It is not for prisoners to be too silent in their words, and therefore I will say nothing. I thank God I have as little patience as another man, and therefore I can be quiet. I do affect the very ground, which is base, or her shoe, which is baser, guided by her foot, which is basest doth tread. I shall be forsworn, which is a great argument of falsehood, if I love. And how can that be true love, which is falsely attempted? Love is a familiar, love is a devil. There is no such evil angel but the love. Yet was Samson so tempted? And he had an excellent strength, yet was Solomon so seduced and he had a very good wit. Cupid's butt shaft is too hard for Hercules' club and therefore too much odds for a Spaniard's rapier. 
the first and second cause will not serve my turn. The Passato he respects not, the Duello he regards not. His disgrace is to be called a boy, but his glory is to subdue men. Adieu of valor, rust rapier, be still drum, for your manager is in love. Yea, he loveth. Assist me, some extemporal god of mine, for I am sure I shall turn senator. Devise wit, write pen, for I am whole volumes in folio. Act two, scene one. Now, madam, summon up your dearest spirits. Consider who the king your father sends, to whom he sends, and what's his embassy. Yourself held precious in the world's esteem to parley with the sole inheritor of all perfections that a man may owe, <laughs> matchless Navarre, the plea of no less weight than Aquitaine, a dowry for a queen. Be now as pro prodigal of all dear grace as nature was in making graces dear when she did starve the general world beside and prodigally gave them all to you. Good Dame Boyette, my beauty, though but me, need not the painted flourish of your praise. <laughs> beauty is bought by judgment of the eye, not uttered by base sale of Chapman's tongues. I am less proud to hear you tell my worth than you much willing to be counted wise in spending your wit in the praise of mine. But now to task for task. Good Boyette, you are not ignorant. All telling fame doth noise abroad. Navarre hath made a vow till painful study shall outwear three years. No woman may approach his silent court. Therefore, to seemeth a needful course before we enter his forbidden gates to know his pleasure. And in that behalf, bold of your worthiness, we single you as our best moving fair solicitor. <laughs> Tell him the daughter of the King of France on serious business craving quick dispatch, importunes personal conference with his grace. Haste, signify so much while we attend like humble visaged suitors, his high will. Proud of employment, willingly I go. All pride is willing pride and yours is so. Who are the votaries, my loving friends that are vow fellows of this virtuous duke? Thongville is one. <laughs> know you the man? I know him, madam. At a marriage feast in Normandy, I saw I this long ago, a man of sovereign parts. He is esteemed <laughs> well fitted in art, glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill that he would well. The only soil of his fair virtues glossed if virtue's gloss will stain with any soil, is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will, whose edge hath power to cut, whose will still wills it, should none spare that come within his power. <laughs> Some merry mocking lord be like, is so? <laughs> they say so most that most his humors know. <laughs> Such short lived wits do wither as they grow. Who are the rest? The young Dumaine, a well-accomplished youth, of all that virtue loved for virtue loved, most power to do most harm, least knowing ill, for he hath wit to make an ill shape good, and shape to win grace, though he had no wit. I saw him at the Duke Altenon's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his great worthiness. Another of those students at that time was there with him, if I have heard a truth, her own, they call him, but a merrier man within the limit of becoming mirth. I never spent an hour's talk with all. His eye begets occasion for his wit, for 
every object that the one doth catch, but the other turns to a mirth-moving jest, which his fair tongue, conceits expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words, that aged ears play truant at his tales, and younger hearings are quite ravished. So sweet and voluble is his discourse. <laughs> God bless my ladies, are they all in love that every one her own hath garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyette. Now, what admittance, friend? Navarre had notice of your fair approach, and he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, this much I have learnt. He rather means to lodge you here in the field like one who comes here to besiege his court than to <laughs> seek a dispensation for his oath to let you in his unpeeled house. <laughs> Here, here comes Navarre. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair, I give you back again. And welcome, I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours and welcome to the wide fields too base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome then, conduct me thither. Hear me, dear lady, I have sworn an oath. I hear your grace hath sworn out, sworn out housekeeping. Tis deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. <laughs> but pardon me, I am too sudden bold. To teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming, and suddenly resolve me my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away, for you'll prove perjured if you make me stay. Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. It was long of you that spur me with such questions. Their wit's too hot, it speeds too fast, it will tire. Not till it leave the rider in the mire. What time of day? The time the fool should ask. Now fair befall your mind. A fair befall the face it covers. And send you many loves. Amen, so you be none. Nay, then will I be gone. Mm -hmm. oh. Madam, your father doth here intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum dispersed by my father and his wars. But say that he or we, as neither have, received that sum, yet there remains unpaid a hundred thousand more, in surety of the which one part of Aquitaine is bound to us, although not valued to the money's worth. If then the king your father will restore but that one half which is unsatisfied, we will give up our right at Aquitaine and hold fair friendship with his majesty. But that, it seems, he little purposeth. For here he doth demand to have repaid a hundred thousand crowns, and not demands on payment of a hundred thousand crowns to have his title live in Aquitaine, which we much rather had depart withal and have the money by our father lent than Aquitaine so gelded as it is. Dear princess, were his requests not so far from reasons yielding, your fair self should make a yielding against some reason in my breast and go well satisfied to France again. You wrong the king, my father, too much, and wrong the reputation of my name, in so unseeming to confess receipt of that which hath so faithfully been paid. I do protest I never heard of it, and if you prove, I'll repay it back or yield up Aquitaine. We arrest your word. Boyette, you can produce acquittances for such a sum from special officers of Charles's father. Oh, uh, satisfy me so. So please your grace, the packet is not come, where that and other specialties are bound. Tomorrow you shall have sight of them. It shall suffice me, at which interview all liberal reason I will yield unto. 
Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand as honor, without breach of honor may, make tender to, of, to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, in my gates, but here, without, you shall be so received, and you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbor in my house. Your own good thoughts excuse me, and farewell. Tomorrow we shall visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort your grace. Thine own wish, wish I thee in every place. Lady, I will commend you to mine own heart. I pray you do my commendations. I would be glad to see it. I would you heard it groan. Oh, is the poor fool sick? Sick at the heart. Alack, let it blood. <laughs> Pricked with your eye? Oh, no point. With my knife. Now, God save thy life. And yours, from long living. I cannot stay Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ma'am, I pray you a word. What lady is that saying? The heir of Alcon, Catherine, her name. Gallian ah, lady. Madam, very well. I beseech you a word. What is she in the white? A woman, sometimes. And you saw her in the light. Perchance light in the light, I desire her name. <laughs> she hath both one for herself to, thy, to desire that were her shame. Pray you, ma'am, whose daughter? Good sir, be not offended. She is an heir of Falconbridge. Nay, my collar is ended. She is a most sweet lady. Not unlike, sir, that may be. Her name in the cap. Rosaline by Good Hap. Is she wedded or no? <laughs> to her will, sir, or so. <laughs> you are welcome, ma'am. Adieu. Farewell to me, sir, and welcome to you. <laughs> Madcap Lord, not a word with him, but a jest. <laughs> and every jest but a word. It was well done of you to take him at his word. <laughs> I was as willing to grapple as he was to board. <laughs> Good wits will be jangling. But gentles, agree. This civil war of wits were much better used on Navarre and his bookmen, for here tis abused. If my observation which very seldom lies by the heart's still redder disclosed with eyes. Deceive me not now, Navarre is infected. <laughs> with what? With that which we lovers entitle affected. Oh, your reason? Why, all his behaviors did make their retire to the court of his eye, peeping through desire. I'll give you Aquitaine and all that is his, and you give him for my sake but one loving kiss. <laughs> Come to our pavilion. Boyette is disposed. But to speak that in words, which his eye hath disclosed, I only have made a mouth of his eye by adding a tongue which I know will not lie. Thou art an old lovemonger and speak it skillfully. <laughs> Do you hear, my mad wenches? What then do you see? Our way to be gone. <laughs> you are too hard for me. Act three, scene one. Warble, child. Make passionate sense of hearing. Come calling out. Ah, sweet air. Go, tenderness of years. Take this key. Give enlargement to the swain. Bring him festively hither. I must implore him in a letter to my love. Master, will you win your love with a French brawl? How meanest thou? Brawling in French? No, no, my complete master. But to jig off a tune at the tongue's end, 
canary to it with your feet, sigh a note and sing a note. Oh. These are compliments. These are humors. These betray nice wenches that would be betrayed without these and make them men of note. Do you note me? And that most are affected to these. How hast thou purchased this experience? By my penny of observation. But oh, but oh! The hobby horse is forgot. Call'st thou my love hobby horse? No, master, the hobby horse is but a colt and your love perhaps a hackney. But have you forgot your love? Almost I had. Negligent student, learn her by heart. By heart? An in heart, boy. An out of heart, master. All those three I will prove. What will thou prove? A man. If I live, and this by, in, and without, by heart you love her because your heart cannot come by her. In heart you love her because your heart is in love with her and out of heart you love her being out of heart that you cannot enjoy her. I am all these three. And three times as much more and yet nothing at all. Uh, fetch hither the swain. He must carry me a letter. A horse to be ambassador for an ass. <laughs> what sayest thou? Mary, sir, you must send the ass upon the horse for he is very slow gated, but I go. The way is but short. Away! As swift as lead, sir. <laughs> Thy meaning, pretty ingenious, is not lead a metal heavy, dull and slow? Honest master, no. I say lead is slow. You are too swift, sir, to say so. Is that lead slow which is fired from a gun? Sweet smokes of rhetoric. He reputes me a cannon, and the bullet, that's he. I shoot thee at thy swain. Thump then, and I flee. A most acute juvenile, voluble and free of grace, by thy favor, sweet villain. I must sigh in thy face, most rude melancholy. Valor give thee place. My herald is returned. A wonder, master. Here's a costard with a broken shin, broken in a shin. Some enigma, some riddle. Come thy envoy, begin. No enigma, no riddle, no l'envoy. No solve in the mail, sir. No l'envoy, <laughs> no l'envoy. No salve, sir, but a plantain. By virtue, thou enforces laughter. Thy silly thought, my spleen, the heaving of my lungs provokes me to <laughs> ridiculous smiling. Oh, pardon me, my stars. Doth the inconsiderate take salve for the envoy, and the word l'envoy for a salve? Do the wise think them each other? Is not l'envoy a salve? No, page. It is an epilogue or discourse to make plain some obscure precedence that hath both to four been sane. I will example it. The fox, the ape, and the humblebee were still at odds, but being three, there's the moral. Now the envoy. I will add the, the l'envoy. Say the moral again. The fox, the ape, and the humblebee were still at odds, being but three. Mm, until the goose came out of the door and stayed the odds by adding four. Come hither, come hither. How did the argument begin? By saying that a costard was broken in a shin, then called you for the lawn boy. Tell me, how was there a costard broken in a shin? I will tell you sensibly. Thou hast no Thou hast feeling of it, moth. I will speak that l'envoy. I, Costard, running out, that was safely within, fell over the threshold and broke my shin. We will talk no more <laughs> of the matter. Sir Costard, I will enfranchise thee. Oh, marry me to one, Francis. I smell some l'envoy, some goose in this. By my sweet soul, I mean setting thee at liberty, in freedoming thy person. Thou art 
immured, restrained, captivated, bound. True, true. And now you will be my purgation and let me loose. I give thee thy liberty. Set thee from endurance and in lieu thereof, impose on thee nothing but this. Bear the significant to the county made Jaquinetta. There is our immunization. For the best of the ward of mine honor is rewarding my dependence. Moth, follow. Like the sequel, I, Senor Costard, adieu. Now will I look to this remuneration. Remuneration, oh! That's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings, remuneration. <laughs> What's the price of this inky? One penny. No, I will give you a remuneration. Why it carries it. <laughs> remuneration. <laughs> Why, it is a fairer name than French crown. <laughs> I will never buy and sell out of this word. <laughs> oh, my good knave, Costard. Exceedingly well met. Pray you, sir, how much carnation riband may a man buy for a remuneration? What is a remuneration? Mary, sir, half penny farthing. Why then, three farthing worth of silk. <gasps> I thank your worship. God be with you. Stay, slave. I must employ thee. As thou wilt win my favor, good my knave, do one thing for me that I shall entreat. When would you have it done, sir? Oh, this afternoon. Well, I will do it, sir. Fare you well. Oh, thou knowest not what it is. I shall know, sir, when I have done it. Villain, thou must know first. <laughs> I will come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. Parksley, it is but this. The princess comes to hunt here in the park, and in her train there is a gentle lady. When tongues speak sweetly, then they name her name, and Rosaline, they call her. Ask for her, and to her white hand, see thou do commend this sealed up council. There's thy guerdon, go. Guerdon. Oh, sweet guerdon. Better than remuneration. <laughs> 11 pence farthing better. Oh, most sweet guerdon. I will do it, sir, in print. And I, sooth in love, I that have been love's whip, a very beetle to a humorous sigh, a critic, nay, a night watch constable, domineering pedant o'er the boy, in whom no mortal so magnificent. This wimpled, whining, purblind, wayward boy, the senior junior, giant dwarf, Dan Cupid, regent of love rhymes, lord of folded arms, the anointed sovereign of sighs and groans, liege of all loiterers and malcontents, dread prince of plackets, king of codpieces, sole imperator and great general of trotting territories. Oh, my little heart. And I to be a corporal of his field and wear his colors like a tumbler spook. What? I love? I sue? I seek a wife? Nay, to be perjured, which is worst of all. And among three, to love the worst of all. And by heaven, one that will do the deed. The Argus were her eunuch and her guard. And I to sigh for her, to watch for her, to pray for her. Go to, it is a plague that Cupid will impose for my neglect of his almighty dreadful little might. So, I will love, pray, sigh, pray, do. And groan. Some men must love my lady, and some Joan. Act four, scene one. And it spurred his horse so hard against the steep uprising of the hill. I know not, but I think it was not he. Where I was, I showed a mounting mind. <laughs> well, friends, 
Today we shall have our dispatch. On Saturday we will return to France. Then, Forrester, my friend, where is the bush that we must stand and play the murderer in? Hereby upon the edge of yonder coppice, uh, a stand where you may make the fairest shoot. I thank my beauty, I am fair that shoot, and thereupon thou speakest the fairest shoot. <laughs> oh, pardon me, madam, for I meant not so. What? First praise me, and again say no. Oh, short-lived pride, not fair, a lack for woe. Yes, madam, fair. Nay, never paint me now. Where <laughs> fair is not, praise cannot mend the brow. Here, my good glass, take this for telling true. Fair payment for foul word, words is more than due. Oh, nothing but fair is that which you inherit. Oh, see, see, my beauty will be saved by merit. Oh, heresy and fair, fit for these days. A giving hand, the fowls shall have fair praise. But come, the bow, now mercy goes to kill, and shooting well is then accounted ill. Here comes the member of the Commonwealth. God dig you then all. I pray you, which is the head lady? <laughs> Thou shalt know her, fellow, by the rest that have no heads. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the greatest lady, the highest? The thickest and the tallest? <laughs> What's your will, sir? What's your will? I have a letter from Monsieur Baron to one Lady Rosaline. <laughs> oh, thy letter, thy letter. <laughs> he is a good friend of mine. Stand aside, good bearer. Boyette, you can carve. Break upon this component. I am bound to serve. This letter is mistook. It importeth none here. It is writ to Jacquinetta. <laughs> we will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax and everyone give ear. By heaven, by heaven thou art, that thou art fair is most, most infallible, true, that thou art beauteous, truth itself, that thou art lovely. More fair than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself, <laughs> And miseration on thy heroical vassal. <laughs> the magnanimous and most illustrate King Cofichua set eye upon the pernicious and indubitate beggar Xenelophon, and it was he that might re rightly say, Veni vidi vici which to anatomize in the vulgar, oh, base and obscure vulgar, <laughs> that Vidaliset he came, saw, and overcame. I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy lowliness. <laughs> Shall I commend thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. What shalt, what shalt thou exchange for rags? Robes. For tittles? Titles. For thyself? Me. Thus, <laughs> expecting thy reply, I profane my lips upon thy foot thy eyes on my thy picture and my heart on thy every part thine in the dearest design of industry don adriano de armado <laughs> oh, what a bloom of feathers is he that indicted in this letter <laughs> what vain what weather cock how did you ever hear that <laughs> This armado is a Spaniard that keeps here in court. A fantasim, a monarcho, and one that makes sport to the prince and his bookmates. Uh, 
thou fellow, a word. Who gave thee this letter? I told you, my lord. To whom shouldst thou give it? From my lord to my lady. From which lord to which lady? From my lord Barone, a good master of mine, to a lady of France that he called Rosaline. Thou hast mistaken his letter. Come, friends, away. Here, sweet, put this up. Twill be thine another day. Who is the suitor? Who is the suitor? Shall I teach thee to know? I, my continent of beauty. Why, she that bears the bow. <laughs> My lady goes to kill horns, but if thy marry, hang me by the neck, if that horns that year miscarry, finally put on. Well, then I am the tutor. And who is your dear? Well, if we choose thy horns, yourself, come not near, finally put on indeed. You still wrangle with her, Boyette, and she strikes at the brow. <laughs> but she herself is hit lower. Ah! Have I hit her now? Come, come, you talk greedily. Your lips grow foul. Oh, she's too hard for you at pricks, sir. Challenge her to bowl. <laughs> I fear too much rubbing. <laughs> good night, my good owl. Oh, my troth, most sweet jests, most incony vulgar wit. When it comes so smoothly off, so obscenely, as it were, so fit. <laughs> Our motto on the one side, oh, a most dainty man. <laughs> to see him walk before a lady and to bear her fan. To see him kiss his hand. And how most sweetly it will swear. And his page on the other side, that <laughs> handful of wit. Ah, uh, heavens, it is a most pathetical knit. Salah! Salah! Act four, scene two. Oh, very reverend sport. Truly, and, and done in the testimony of a good conscience. The deer was, as you know, sanguis in blood, ripe as the palm water, who now hangeth like a jewel in the ear of Calo, the sky, the welkin, the heaven, and anon falleth like a crab on the face of terra, the soil, the land, the earth. Truly, Mistress Holofernes, the epithets are sweetly varied, like a scholar at the least, but ma'am, I assure you, it was a buck of the first head. Sir Nathaniel, hod credo. Uh, t'was, t'was not a hod credo, t'was a prick. Most barbarous intimation, yet a kind of insinuation, as it were, in via, in way of explication, after his undressed, unpolished, uneducated, unpruned, untrained, or rather unlettered, or ratherest, unconfirmed fashion, to insert again my hod credo, or a deer. Uh, I, I, I say the deer was not a whole credo, it was a cricket. Oh, thou monster ignorance, how deformed dost thou look? Sir, he, he hath never fed of the dainties that are bred of a book. He hath not eat paper, as it were. He hath not drunk ink. His intellect is not replenished. He is only an animal only sensible in the duller eyes. For as it would ill become me it to, be, to be vain, indiscreet or a fool, so the, there were a patch on, and set on learning to see him in a school. But omne bene, say I, being an old father's mind, many can brook the weather that love not the wind. Uh, you, 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 you two are bookmen. Can you tell me by your wit what was a month old at Cain's birth that's not five weeks old as yet? 
Dictina Goodman Dull. Dictina Goodman Dull. What what is Dictina? A title to Phoebe. To Luna. To the moon. The moon was a month old when Adam was no more, and wrought not to five weeks when he came to five score. The illusion holds in the exchange. Tis true. In, indeed, the collusion holds in the exchange. God comfort that capacity. I say the illusion holds in the exchange. And I say the pollution holds in the exchange, for the moon is is never but a month old. And, and I say beside that, t'was a pricket that the kin princess killed. Sir Nathaniel, will you hear an extemporal epitaph on the death of the deer? And to humor the ignorant, I have called the deer the princess killed a pricket. Oh, Kergay, good, good mistress Holofernes. Kergay, so which will please you to abrogate scurrility? The prayful princess pierced and pricked a pretty pleasing pricket. Some say a sore, but not a sore till now made sore with shooting. The dogs did yell, put L to sore, then sorrel jumps from thicket, or pricket sore, or else sorrel, the people fall a hooting. If sore be sore, then L to sore makes 50 sores, one sorrel. If one sore, I and 100 make, by adding but one more L. Oh, a rare talent. But if, if talent be a claw, look, look how he claws him with a talent. And this is a gift I have. Simple, simple. A foolish, extravagant spirit full of forms, figures, shapes, objects, ideas, apprehensions, motions, revolutions. These are begot in the ventricle of memory, nourished in the womb of Pia Mater, and delivered upon the mellowing of occasion. But the gift is good in those in whom it is acute, and I am thankful for it. Ma'am, I praise the Lord for you, and so many uh, uh, may my, and so may my parishioners, for their daughters are well tutored by you, and their sons profit very greatly under you. You are a good member of the commonwealth. A me, Herkel. If their daughters be ingenious, they shall want no instruction. If their sons be capable, I will put them to it. God give you good morrow, Master Parson. Good Master Parson, be so good as read me this letter. It was given to me by Costard and sent me from Don Armado. I, I beseech you, read it. What, my soul, verses? Aye, sir, and well, very learned. Let me hear a staff, a stands, a verse, legge, domine. Okay. If love make me forsworn, how shall I swear to love? Ah, never faith could hold, if not beauty vowed, if knowledge be the mark, to know thee shall suffice. Well learned is that tongue, that well can thee commend, all ignorant that soul that sees thee without wonder, which is to me some praise, that I thy parts admire, uh, uh, thy eye Jove's lightning bears, the voice his dreadful thunder, which not to anger bent is music and sweet fire, celestial as thou art, oh pardon, love this wrong, that sings heaven's praise with such an earthly tongue. You find not the apostrophus, and so miss the accent. Let me supervise the canzonet. Here are only numbers ratified, bought for the elegancy, facility, and golden cadence of poesy, carrot. But, Demosella, virgin, was this directed to you? I, sir, from one Monsieur Baron, one of the strange queen's lords. I will overglance the superscript. To the snow white hand of the most beauteous Lady Rosaline. I will look again on the intellect of the letter for the nomination of the party writing to the person written unto. Your ladyship's in all desired employment, Barone. Sir Nathaniel, this Barone is one of the votaries with the king. And here he hath framed a letter to a sequent of the stranger queens, which accidentally, or by the way of progression, hath miscarried. Trip and grow, my sweet. Trip and go, my sweet. Deliver this paper into the royal hand of the king. It may concern much. Stay not thy compliment. 
I forgive thy duty. Adieu. Good co-star, go with me. Sir, God save your life. Have with thee, my girl. Sir, you have done this in fear of God, very religiously, and as certain fathers say it. Sir, tell me not of the father. I do fear colorable colors. But to return to the verses, did they please you, Sir Nathaniel? Oh, marvelous well for the pen. I do dine today at the father of a certain pupil of mine, where if before repast, it shall please you to gratify the table with a grace I will on my privilege I have with the parents of the foresaid child or pupil, undertake your benvenuto, where I will prove those verses to be very unlearned, neither savoring of poetry, wit, nor invention. I beseech your society. And thank you too, for society, saith the text, is the happiness of life. And certus, the text most infallibly concludes it. <coughs> Sir, I do invite you to. You shall not say me nay, pauca verba, away. The gentles are at their game and we will to our recreation. Act four, scene three. The king, he is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself, they pitch the foil. I'm toiling in a pitch, pitch that defiles, defile. A foul word, well, sit me down, sorrow. For so they say the fool said, and so say I, and I am the fool. Well, prove to it. I will not love. If I do, hang me. With faith, I will not. Oh, but her eye. By this light, but for her eye, I would not love her. Yes, for her two eyes. Well, I do nothing in the world but lie, and lie in my throat. By heaven, I do love, and have taught me to rhyme and to be melancholy. And here is part of my rhyme and here my melancholy. Well, she hath one of my sonnets already. Clown board, the fool sent it and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweeter fool, sweetest. Oh, by the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. Here comes one with a paper. God give him grace to throne. I read. Shot by heaven. Proceed, sweet Cupid. Thou hast dumped him with thy bird bolt under the left cap. In faith, secrets. So sweet a kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon a rose as thy eye do. And their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheek down so. Nor shines the silver moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep as off thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep. No drop but as a coat doth carry thee. So ridest thou triumphing in my woe. Do but behold the tears that swell in me. And they thy glory through my grief will show. If do not love thyself, then thou wilt keep my tears for glasses and still make me weep. O oh, queen of queens, how far dost thou excel? No thought can think nor tongue of mortal tell. How dost thou know my grief? I'll drop the paper. Three leaves, jade folly. Who is he come to? Long ago, and reading. Listen, he says. Now, in thy likeness, one more fool appear. <laughs> What's the fool say? <sighs> I'm me, I am forsworn. One drunkard loves another of the name. Am I the first that have been perjured so? I could put thee in comfort. Not by two that I know. I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. Oh, sweet Maria, empress of my love, 
These numbers will I tear and write in prose. Rhymes are guards on wanton puke toes. This figure not to slop. Same shall go. Uh, did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye, against whom the world cannot hold argument, persuade my heart to this false perjury? Vows for thee broke deserve not punishment. A woman I forswore, but I will prove thou being a goddess. I forswore not thee. My vow was earthly, thou a heavenly love. Thy grace being gained cures all disgrace, disgrace in me. Vows are but breath, and breath of vapor is. Then thou, fair sun, which on my earth dost shine, exhales, exhales this vapor vow, in thee it is. If broken, then it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise? Gotta mend us, gotta mend. We are much out of the way. By whom shall I send this? Company, stay. All hid, all hid, old infant play. Like a demigod here sit I in the sky, and wretched fool secrets equally o'er I. More sacks to the mill, oh heavens, I have my wish. Name transformed, poor woodcocks in a dish. Oh, most divine Kate. Oh, most profane coxcomb. By heaven, the wonder in a mortal eye. By earth, she is but corporal. There you lie. Oh, that I had my wish. And I had mine. And I mine too, good Lord. Amen, so I had mine. Is that not a good word? I will forget her. But a fever she rings in my blood and will remember thee. Once more, I will read the oath that I writ. Once more, I'll mark how love can bury wit. <clears throat> On the day, alack the day, love whose month is ever May, spied a blossom passing fair, playing in the wanton air. Though the velvet leaves the wind, all unseen again passage find that the lover sick to death wished himself the heaven's breath. Ere, quoth he, thy cheeks may blow, ere would I might try and so. But alack, my hand is sworn never to pluck thee from thy thorn. Vow alack for youth and meet, youth so apt to pluck a sweet. Do not call it sin in me, that I am forsworn for thee. Thou for whom even, even Jove would swear, Juno, but the Ethiopian were, and deny himself for Jove, turning mortal for thy love. This I will stand, and something else more plain, that expresses my true love's fasting pain. Oh, would, I, would the king, Burrow and Longueville were lovers true. Ill examples ill. Hmm. Well, from my forehead wept a Persian note, for none offend were all alike to dote. Domain, thy love is far from charity, that in love's grief desire society. You may look pale, but I should blush, I know, to be o'erheard and taken napping so. Come, sir. You blush, as is your case is such. You chided him, offending twice as much. You do not love Maria. Longavelle did never spark for her sake and pile. Nor never made his wreathed arms afford his loving bosom to keep down his heart. I have been close and solid in this foot, and marked you both, and for you both did blush. I heard your guilty rhymes, observed your fashion, saw sighs from you noted well your passion. You would for you would for paradise break faithfully. And so for your love would infringe an oath. What will Barone say when that when that he shall hear faith infringed with such zeal this swear? How he will scorn, how will he spend his wit, how will he triumph, leap and laugh at it? For all the wealth that ever I did see, I would not have him know so much by me. Step I forth to whip hypocrisy. Ah, good my liege, I pray thee pardon me. Good heart. 
What grace hast thou thus to reprove these worms from loving that art most in love? Your eyes do make no coaches. In your tears there is no certain princess that appears. You'll not be perjured. Tis a hateful thing. Hush. None but minstrels like it sonneting. But are you not ashamed? Nay, are you not? All three of you? To be thus or sh this thus much or shat? Oh, what a scene of foolery have I seen. Of sighs, of groans, of sorrow, and of teen. Oh, me, with what strict patience have I sat to see a king transformed to a gnat. Where lies thy grief? Oh, tell me, good domain. And gentle Longueville, where lies thy pain? And where my lieges? All about the breast. Coddled, ho! Oh. Too bitter is thy death. Are you betrayed thus to thy overview? Not you by me. I betrayed by you. I that am honest. I that hold it sin to break the vow I am engaged in. I am betrayed by keeping company with men like men, men of inconstancy. When shall you see me write a thing in rhyme or groan for Joan or spend a minute's time in pruning me? When shall you hear that I, well, I will praise a hand, a foot, a face, an eye, a gait, a state, a brow, a breast, a waist, a leg, a limb? I, oh, whither away so fast? A true man or a beast of Galisto? I post from love, good lover. Let me go. God bless the king. What present hast thou here? Some certain treason. What makes treason here? Nay, it makes nothing, sir. This is mar nothing either, but treason and you go away and speak together. I beseech your grace, let this letter be, be read. Our parson misdoubts it, twas reason, he said. Earl, read it over. Where hast thou it? Of Costard. Where hast thou it? Of Don Adramadio. Of Don Adramadio. Hmm. How now? What is in you? What? A toy. Oh no, what is in you? Why dost thou tear it? A toy, my liege, a toy. Your grace needs not fear it. It did move him to passion, therefore let's hear it. <laughs> it is Burroughs writing, and here is his name. Hmm. Ah, you horse on loggerhead. You were born to do me shame. Guilty, my lord. Guilty. I confess, I confess. What? That you three fools lacked me, fool, to make up the mess. He, he, and you, and you, my liege, and I are pick purses in love, and we deserve to die. Oh, dismiss this audience, and I shall tell you more. Now the number is seven. The E. Huh? E, true, true. We are four. Will these turtles be gone? Sir, away. Walk aside the true folk and let the traitors stay. Ah, sweet lords, sweet lovers. Ah, let us embrace. As true we are as flesh and blood can be. The sea will ebb and flow, heaven show his face. Young blood doth not obey an old decree. We cannot cross the cause why we were born. Therefore, of all hands must we be. What, did these rent lines show some love of thine? Did they? Quoth you? Who sees the heavenly Rosaline bows not his vassal head, and struck and blind kisses the base ground with obedient breast? What peremptory eagle-sided eye dares look upon the heaven of her brow that is not blinded by her majesty? Well, what zeal, what fury hath inspired thee now? My love, her mistress, is a gracious moon. She and attending star scarce seen the light. My eyes are then no eyes, nor I broom. Oh, for my love, day would turn to night. Oh, tis the sun that maketh all things shine. But 
what is this? Are we not all in love? Nothing so sure, and thereby all forsworn. Then leave this chat, and Broadborough now prove our loving lawful and our faith not torn. Ay, Mary, there is some flattery for this evil. Oh, some authority how to proceed, some tricks, some quillets, how to cheat the devil. Don't slay for perjury. Oh, tis more than need. Have at you then, affections, men at arms. Consider what you first did swear unto. To fast, to study, and to see no woman. Flat treason gainst the kingly state of youth. Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young, and abstinence engenders maladies. Oh, we have made a vow to study, lords. And in that vow, we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my leech, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with. Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, but love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone and mirrored in the brain, but with the motion of all elements. Courts is as swift as thought into every power and gives to every power a double power of other functions and their offices. It adds a precious scene to the eye. Lover's eyes will gaze in eagle blind. Lover's ear will hear the lowest sound when a suspicious head of death to stop. Never durst the poet touch his pen to write, but his ink were tempered. Love sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humanity. From women's eyes, this doctrine I derive. They sparkle still the right Promethean fire. They are the books, the arts, the academes that show, contain, and nourish all the world, else none at all in art proves excellent. Then, fools you were, these women to forswear. Keeping what is sworn, you will prove fools. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion to be thus forsworn. Charity itself fulfills the law. And who can sever love from charity? Thank you for it, Ben. And soldiers, to the field. Advance your standards, and upon them, lords, tell mel down with them. Now to plain dealing. Lay these gloses by. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? And win them, too. The fort has to buy some entertainment for them in their tent. First. From the park, let us conduct them thither. Then homeward, every man attach the hand of his fair mistress. In the afternoon, we will with some strange pastime solace them, such as the shortness of the time to escape. For revels, dances, masks, and merry hours, forerun fair love, strewing her way with flowers. Away, away. No time shall be omitted that will be time and made by us. <laughs> alons, alons, so it cockle the reap no corn. And justice always whirls in equal measure. Light winches may prove plagues to men forsworn. If so, our copper buys no better treasure. Act five, scene one. Sages quod sufficit. Well, I praise God for you, ma'am. Your re reasons at dinner have been sharp and sententious, pleasant without scurrility. Witty without affection, audacious without impudence, learned without opinion, and strange uh, without heresy. I did converse this quondam day with a companion of the king's who is intituled, nominated, or called Don Adriano de Armado. His humor is lofty, his discourse peremptory, his tongue filed, his eye ambitious, his gait majestical, and his general behavior vain, ridiculous, and thrasonical. He is too picked, too spruce, too affected, too odd, as I may call it. Oh, uh, a most singular and choice epithet. <sighs> he draws out the head of his verbosity finer than the staple of his argument. 
I abhor such fanatical phantasms, such insociable and point devised companions, such rackers of orthography. Chira! Aquare chira, not sira. Men of peace, well encountered. A most military, sir, salutation. They have been at a great feast of languages and stolen the scraps. Oh, they have lived long on the alms basket of words. I marvel thy master hath not eaten thee for a word, for thou art not so long by the head as honorific abilitudin atatibus. Thou art easier swallowed than a flap dragon. Peace, the peal begins. <laughs> Monsieur, are you not lettered? Yes, yes, he teaches boys the horn book. Mm. What is A, B, spelt backward with the horn on his head? And ba, pueritia, with a horn added. Ba, most silly sheep with a <laughs> horn. You hear his learning. Now, by the salt wave of the Mediterranean, a sweet touch, a quick venue of wit, snip, snap, quick and home. I rejoice as my intellect, true wit. And I had but one penny in the world, thou shouldst have it to buy gingerbread. Hold, there is the very remuneration I had of thy master. Thou half-penny purse of wit, thou pigeon egg of discretion. Oh, and the heavens were so pleased that thou wert but my bastard. What a joyful father wouldst thou make me. Artsman, preambula, we will be singled from the barbarous. Do not, did you not ask the youth at the charge house on top of the mountain? Or Mons the hill. At your speech pleasure, for the mountain. I do, sans question. Sir, it is the king's most sweet pleasure and affection to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of this day, which the rude multitude call the afternoon. Uh, the posterior of the day, most generous, sir, is liable, congruent, and measurable for the afternoon. The word is well called, chose, sweet, and apt. I do assure you, sir, I do assure. Mm -hmm. Sir, the king is a noble gentleman, and my familiar. I do assure ye, very good friend. For what is inward between us, let it pass. But I do beseech thee, remember thy curtsy. I beseech thee, apparel thy head, and among other importunate and most serious designs, of great import indeed too, but let that pass. For I must tell thee it will please his grace by the word, sometime to lean upon my poor shoulder with his royal finger thus daily with my excrement, my mustachio, but sweetheart, let it pass. By the world, I recount no fable, some certain special honors that plead this is greatness to import. To her motto, a soldier, a man of travel that has seen the world, but let that pass. The very all of all is, but sweetheart, I, I do implore secrecy that the king would have me present the princess, sweet Chuck, with some delightful ostentation or show or pageant or antic or firework. Now, understanding that the curate and your sweet self are good at such eruptions and sudden breaking out of mirth, as it were, I have acquainted you with all, to the end to crave your assistance. Sir, you shall present before her the nine worthies. Sir Nathaniel, as concerning some entertainment of time, some show in the posterior of this day, to mm. be rendered by our assistance, the king's command, and this most gallant, illustrate, and learned gentleman before the princess. I say none so fit as to present the nine worthies. Where will you find men worthy enough to present them? And Joshua, yourself, myself, Alexander, 
This gallant gentleman, Judas Maccabeus, this swain, because of his great limb or joint, shall pass Pompey the Great, the page, Hercules. <laughs> Pardon, sir, error. He is not quantity enough for that worthy thumb. He is not so big as the end of his club. Shall I have audience? He shall present Hercules in minority. Mm. His enter and exit shall be strangling a snake. And I will have an apology for that purpose. An excellent device. So if any of the audience hiss, you may cry, well done, Hercules. Now thus crushest the snake. That is the way to make an offense gracious, though few have the grace to do it. For the rest of the worthy. I will play three myself. Rice worthy gentlemen. Shall I tell you a thing? We attend. We will have, if this fashion not, an antic. I beseech you follow. Avaya, good Mendel, thou hast spoken no word all this while. Uh, not, no, nor, nor understood none neither, sir. <laughs> Elons, we will employ thee. I'll make one in a dance or so. I will play on the tabor to the worthies and let them dance to hay. Most dull, honest dull. To our sport, away! Act five, scene two. Sweetheart. We shall be rich ere we depart, if fairings come thus plentifully in. A lady walled about with diamonds. <laughs> you, what I have from the king. <laughs> Madam, you came nothing else with that? Nothing. But this, <laughs> yes, as much love in rhyme as was written, as could be crammed up in a sheet of paper, written both sides, leap, margent and all, <laughs> that he was fain to seal on Cupid's name. Well, that was a way to make his godhead wax, for he hath been five thousand years a boy. But Rosaline, you have a favour too. Who sent it, and what is it? I would you knew. Nay, I have verses too, I thank Barone. <laughs> The number is true, and were the numbering too, I were the fairest goddess on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but Catherine, what was sent to you from Fair Domain? Madam, this glove. Did he not send you twain? Yes, madam, and moreover, some thousand verses of a faithful lover, a huge translation of hypocrisy, vilely compiled, profound simplicity. And these pearls, to me said Longville, the letter is too long by half a mile. <laughs> I think no less. Dost thou not wish in heart the chain were longer and the letter short? <laughs> Aye, or I would these hands might never part. <laughs> we are wise girls to mock our lovers so. They are worse fools to purchase mocking so. <laughs> that same Barone, I'll torture ere I go. Oh, that he, I knew he were in it by the week. How I would make him a fawn and beg and seek and shape his service solely to my hest and make him proud to make me proud that Jess. So, for to it like, would I or swear his fate that he should be my fool and I his fate. <laughs> None are so surely caught when they are catched as wit turned fool. Folly in wisdom hatch hath wisdom's warrant and the help of school and wit's own grace to grace a learned fool. The blood of youth burns not with such excess as gravity's revolt to wantedness. <laughs> Folly in fools bear not so strong a note as foolery in the wise when wit doth dote. <gasps> oh, here comes Boyet. I have mirth is in her face. Oh, I am stabbed with laughter. <laughs> Where, where's her grace? Thy news, Boyette. Prepare, madam, prepare. <laughs> arm, wenches, arm. Encounters mounted are against your peace. Love doth approach disguised. 
armed in arguments, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Muster your wits, stand in your own defense, or hide your heads like cowards and fly hence. <laughs> St. Dennis to St. Cupid, what are they that charge their breath against us? Say, Scout, say. <laughs> Under the cool shade of a sycamore, I thought to clothe my eyes for some half an hour. When lo, to interrupt my purposed rest, toward that shade I might behold the dress the king and his companions. Verily, I stole into a neighbor thicket by and overheard what you shall overhear, that by and by, disguised, they will be here. Their, <laughs> their herald is a pretty knavish page that well by heart hath conned his ambassage for, quoth the king, an angel shalt thou see, yet fear not thou, but speak audaciously. The boy replied, an angel is not evil. I should have feared her that she had been a devil. With that, all laughed and clapped him on the shoulder, making the bold wag by their praises bolder. What? What? Come they to visit us? They do. They do. <gasps> and are disguised, too. Their purpose is to parley, court, and dance. And everyone his love feet will advance unto his several mistress, which they'll know by favors, several which they did bestow. And they so. The gallants shall be tasked, for ladies, we will everyone be masked, and not a man of them shall have the grace, despite a suit, to see a lady's face. Hold, Rosaline, this favor thou shalt wear, and then the king will court thee for his dear. Hold thou, take this, my sweet, and give me thine, so shall Barone take me for Rosaline. And change your favours too, so shall your loves, woo contrary, deceived by these removes. Oh, come on then, where are the favours most in sight? But in this changing, what is your intent? The effect of my intent is to cross theirs. They do it but in mocking, mocking merriment. And mock for mock is only my intent. And there's several counsels they ambosom shall to love's mistook and so be mocked with all upon the next occasion that we meet with visages displayed and to talk and greet. But shall we dance if they desire us to it? No, to the death we will not move a foot, nor to their penned speech render we no grace. But while tis spoke, each turn away her face. Why, that contempt will kill the speaker's heart and quite divorce his memory from his past. His past. Therefore I do it, and make no doubt the rest will ne'er come in if he be out. There's no such sport as sport of sport or a throne <laughs> to make theirs ours and ours, none but our own. <laughs> so shall we stay, mocking intended game, and they will mock to depart away with shame. <laughs> <laughs> the trumpet sounds, be masked, the maskers come. All hail the richest beauties on the earth. Beauties no richer than rich taffeta. Uh, a holy parcel of the fairest dames that ever turned their uh, backs to mortal views. Eyes, villain, their eyes. Uh, that ever turned their eyes to mortal views. Out! True, out indeed. <laughs> uh, out of your favors, heavenly spirits, vouchsafe not to behold. Once to behold, rogue. Uh, once to behold with your sunbeamed eyes. With your they will not answer to eye. that. They will not answer to that epithet. <laughs> you were. You were best call it daughter beamed eyes. They do not mark me, and that brings me out. Is this your perfectness? Be gone, you rogue. <laughs> what would these strangers know their minds, boyette? If they do so speak our language, tis our will that some plain man recount their purposes. Know what they would? What would you with the princess? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. What would they say they? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. 
Why that they have, and bid them so be gone. She says you have it, and you may be gone. Say to her we have measured many miles to set a message with you on this rack. They say they have measured many a mile to tread a measure with you on this grass. It is not so. Ask them how many inches is in one mile. If they have measured many, the measure then of one is easily told. If to come hither you have measured miles and how many miles, the princess bids you tell how many inches doth fill up one mile. Tell her we measured them by weary steps. She hears herself. How many weary steps of many weary miles you have overcome are numbered in the travel of one mile? We number nothing that we spend for you. <laughs> Our duty is so rich, so infinite, that we may do it still without account. That's safe to show the sunshine of your face, that we, like savages, may worship it. My face is but a moon, and clouded too. Blessed are the clouds who are such clouds too. Thou think bright moon, and these thy stars to shine, those clouds removed upon our watery eyes. Oh, vain petitioner, beg a greater matter. Thou now request but moonshine on the water. Then in our measure do but not say one thing. Thou bidst be beg, this begging is not free. Play music then. Nay, you must do it soon. Not yet, no dance. Thus change I like the moon. Will you not dance? How come you thus restrain? You took the moon at full, but now she's changed. Yet she is still the moon, and I the man. The music plays. Thou say some motion to it. Our ears vouchsafe it. But your legs should do it. Since you are strangers, and come here by chance, We'll not be nice. Take hands. We will not dance. Why take we hands, then? Only to part as friends. Curtsy, sweethearts, and so the measure ends. More measure of this measure be not nice. We can afford no more at such a price. Price to yourself? What buys your company? Your absence only. That can never be. Then cannot we bought, and so adieu, twice to your visor, and half once to you. If you deny to dance, let me hold my hand. In private, then. My candid mistress, one sweet word with thee. Honey, and milk, and sugar, there is three. One word in secret. Let it not be sweet. Thou greased my gall. Gall, <laughs> bitter. Therefore meet. <clears throat> uh, will you back safe with me to change the word? Name it. Fair lady, I have. Fair lady, so. Fair lord, take that for your fair lady. Oh, please are you, as much in private, I'll bid the Jew. What was your vice sword made without a tongue? I know the reason, lady, why you ask. Oh, for your reason, quickly, sir, I long. You have a double tongue within your mask, and would afford my speechless visor half one word in private with you ere I die. Bleed softly, then, the butcher hears you cry. <laughs> The tongues of mocking wenches are as keen as, in, as is the razor's edge invisible, cutting a smaller hair than may be seen above the sense of sense. So sensible seemeth their conference, their conceits have wings fleeter than arrows, bullets, wind, thought, 
stranger things. <laughs> Not one word more, my maids. Break off. By heaven, all dry beaten with pure scroff. Mm, farewell, mad wenches. You have simple wits. <laughs> So wondered at. <laughs> <laughs> Tapers they are with your sweet breaths puffed out. <laughs> well liking wits they have. And gross, gross, fat, fat. Body <laughs> and wit, kingly poor flout. Will they not think you hang themselves tonight? Whoever but advisors show their faces. This prone was out of continence quite. Oh, they were all in lamentable cases. The king was weeping right for a good word. <laughs> Baron did swear himself out of all suit. Dumaine was at my service and his sword. No point, quoth I, my servant straight was mute. Lord Longeville said, I came o'er his heart and trow you what he called me. Qualm, perhaps? Yes, in good faith. <laughs> sickness as thou art. <laughs> well, better wits have worn plain statute caps. But will you hear the king is my love sworn? <laughs> and quick Baron hath plighted faith to me. <laughs> and Longville was for my service born. Dumaine is mine, as sure as bark on a tree. <laughs> Madam and Pretty mistresses, give ear. Immediately they will be again here in their own shapes, for it can never be they will digest, digest this harsh indignity. Will they return? They will, they will, God knows, and leap for joy, though they are lame with blows. Therefore, change favors, and when they repair, blow like sweet roses in this summer air. How blow? How blow? Speak, to be understood. Fair ladies masked are roses in their bud. Dismasked, their damask sweet commixture shown. Are angels veiling clouds or roses blown? A vaunt perplexity. What shall we do if they return their own shapes to woo? Good madam, if by me you'll be advised, Let's mock them still, <laughs> as well known as disguised. Ladies, withdraw. The gallants are at hand. <gasps> Whip to our tents as rows run over land. Ah, one. Fair madam, God save you. Where's the princess? Gone to her tent, please it your majesty. Command me any service to her hither? That the uh, about to the audience for one word. I will, and so will she, I know, my lord. This lady pecks up wit as pigeons peas, and others it again with God doth please. She is wit's peddler, and retails his wares at wakes, and wassails, meetings, markets, and fairs. She can carve, too, and lisp. Why, this is she that kissed her hand away in courtesy. This is the flower that smiles on every one to show her teeth as white as whale's bone and consciences that will not die in debt. Pay her the due of honey-tongued foyette. A blister on her sweet tongue with my heart that put our motto's page out of his heart. See where it comes. Behavior, what wert thou till this man showed thee, and what art thou now? All hail, sweet madam, and fair time of day. Fair in all hail is foul, as I conceive. Through my speech is better, if you may. Then wish me better. I will give you leave. We came to visit you and purpose now to lead you to our court. Thou take it then. This field shall hold me, and so hold your vow. Nor God nor I delights in perjured men. You me not for that which you provoke. The virtue of your eye must break my oath. 
you nicknamed virtue, vice you should have spoke, for virtue's office never breaks men's trope. Now, by my maiden honour, yet as pure as the unsullied lily, I protest, a world of torments, though I should endure, I would not yield to be your house's guest. So much I hate a breaking cause to be of heavenly oaths vowed with integrity. Oh, you have lived in desolation here, unseen, unvisited, much to our shame. My lord, it is not so, I swear. We have had pastimes here. And pleasant game. A mess of maskers left us of late. <laughs> oh. Aye, in truth, my lord. True gallants, full of courtship and of state. Yes, true gallants, full of courtship and of state. Madam, speak true. It is not so, my lord. My lady, to the manner of the days, in courtesy gives undeserving praise. We four indeed confronted were with four in wild habit. Here they stayed an hour and talked apace. And in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. I dare not call them fools, but this I think. When they are thirsty, fools would fain have drink. This jest is dry to me. Fair gentle sweet, your wit makes wise things fools. When we greet with eyes best seeing, heaven's fiery eye, by light we lose light. Your capacity is of that nature that to your huge store, wise things seem foolish, and rich things but poor. This proves you wise and rich, for in my eye... I am a fool and full of poverty. <laughs> but that you take what doth belong to you, it were fault to snatch words from my lips. Oh! I am yours, and all that I possess. All the fool mine. I cannot give you less. Which of these visors was it that you wore? Where? When? What visor? Why demand you this? There, then, that visor, that superfluous case that hid the worse and showed the better face. Oh, we are described. They'll mop us now downright. Let us confess and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord? Why looks your highness sad? Oh, help! Hold his brow! He'll swoon! <laughs> Why look you pale? Thus pour the stars down plagues for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I, lady. Dart thy skill at me. Bruise me with scorn. Confound me with a flight. With a flout. Thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance. Cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit. Oh, never will I trust a speech as thin, nor to the motion of a schoolboy's tongue, nor never come in visor to my friend, nor woo and rhyme like a blind harper's song, a song, tap of the phrases, silken terms precise, three pilled hyperboles, spruce affectation, <clears throat> figures pedantical. These summer flies have blown me full of maggot ostentation. I do forswear them, and I here protest by this white glove. How white the hand, God knows. <laughs> Henceforth my wooing shall be expressed in russet yeas and honest cursy nose. And to begin, wench, me la, uh, my love to thee is sound. Sounds crack. Or flaw. Sans, sans, I pray you. Yet I have a trick of the older age. Bear with me. I am. I'll leave it by degrees. Soft by the sea. Right. Lord, have mercy on us, on those three. They are infected. In their heart it lies. They have the plague and caught it of your eyes. These lords are visited. You are not free. For the Lord's tokens on you, do I see? No, they are free that gave these tokens to us. Our states are forfeit, seek not to undo us. It is not so. For how can this be true that you stand forfeit, being those that sue? Peace, for I will not have to do with you. 
Nor shall not, if I do as I intend. Speak for yourselves. My wits is at an end. Oh, keep up, sweet madam, for our rude transgression from fair excuse. Fairest is confession. Were you not here, but even now disguised? Madam, I was. And were you well advised? I was, sir, madam. When you then were here, what did you whisper in your lady's ear? That more than all the world I did respect her. When she shall challenge this, you will reject her? On my honor, no. Peace, peace, forbear. Your oath once broke, you force not to forswear. Despise me when I break this oath of mine. I will, and therefore keep it. Rosaline, what did the Russian whisper in your ear? Madam, he swore that he did hold me dear as precious eyesight and did value me above this word, world, adding thereto, moreover, that he would wed me or else die my lover. <laughs> God, give thee joy of him. The noble Lord most honorably doth uphold his word. What mean you, madam? By my life, my throat, I never swore this lady such an oath. By heaven, you did. And to confirm it plain, you gave me this. But take it, sir, again. My faith and this the princess I did give. I knew her by this jewel on her screen. Pardon me, sir. This jewel did she wear? And Lord Barone, I thank him, is my dear. What, will you have me or your pearl again? Neither of either. I remit both twain. I see the trick on it. Here was a consent, knowing aforehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy. Some carry tale, some please man, some slight zany, some mumble new, some trencher knight, some dip that smiles her cheeks in years and knows the trick to make my lady laugh. Hold our intents before. Once disclosed, the ladies did change favorites. And then we, following the signs, wooed but the sign of she. Now, to our perjury to add more terror, we are again forsworn in will and error. Welcome, pure wit. Now parts the fair fray. Oh, Lord. Sir, they would know whether the three worthies shall come in or no? What? Are there but three? Uh, no, sir. But it is very fine for every one percent three. And three times thrice is nine. Not so, sir. Uh, under correction, sir. I hope it is not so. By Jove, I always took three threes for nine. Oh, Lord, sir, it were pity you should get your living by reckoning, sir. How much is it? Oh, Lord, sir, uh, the parties themselves, the actors, sir, will show where until it doth amount. For mine own part, uh, I, I am, as they say, but to perfect one man in one poor man, Pompey and the Great, sir. Art thou one of the worthies? It pleased them to think me worthy of Pompey and the Great. For mine own part, I know not the degree of the worthy, but I am to stand for him. Go, bid them prepare. We will turn it finally off, sir. We will take some care. Our own day will shame us. Let them not approach. We are shame proof, my lord, and tis some policy to have one show worse than the king's in his company. Sport best pleases that doth least know how. <laughs> Where zeal strives to content, and the contents die in the zeal of those which it presents, their form confounded makes most form and mirth when great things laboring perish in their birth. A right description of our sports, my lord. Anointed, I am for so much expense of thy royal sweet breath as will utter a brace of words. I protest. The schoolmaster is exceeding fantastical. Too, too vain, too, too vain. But we will put it, as they say, to Fortuna de la Guerra. I wish you the peace of mind. Most royal compliment. Uh, here is like to be a good presence of worthy. He presents Hector of Troy, Swain, Pompey the Great, the Paracurus Alexander, Armado Te Hercules, uh, the pedant Judas Maccabeus, 
And if these four worthies in the first bill thrive, these four will change habits and present the other five. I Pompey am. You lie. You are not he. <clears throat> I Pompey am. <laughs> Well said, old mocker. I must needs be friends with thee. <clears throat> I Pompey am. Pompey, surnamed the big... The great. It is great, sir. Pompey, surnamed the great, that often field with targe and shield did make my foe to sweat. And traveling along this coast, I hear him come by chance and lay my arms before the legs of this sweet lass of France. If your ladyship would say, thanks, Pompey, I had done. Great, thanks. Great, Pompey. <laughs> it is not so much worth, but, but, but I hope I was perfect. I made a little fault in great. I had to a half penny. Pompey proves the best worthy. Alexander. Sir Alexander, come forth. Proceed, good Alexander. Uh -huh. When in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. By east, West, north, and south, I spread my conquering might. Uh, my scutcheon plain declares that I am Alexander. <coughs> the conqueror is dismayed. Proceed, good Alexander. When in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. <laughs> Most true, tis right. You were so, Alessander. Pompey the Great. <laughs> Your servant and custard. Take away the conqueror. Take away Alessander. <laughs> oh, sir, you have overthrown Alessander the Conqueror. A conqueror in a fear to speak? <laughs> Run away for shame, Alessander. <laughs> there, and shall please you. <laughs> A foolish, mild man. An honest man, look you, and soon dashed. He is a marvelous good neighbor, Faith, and a very good bowler. But for Alessander, <laughs> alas, you see how tis, a, a little or parted. But there are worthies a coming will speak their mind in some other sort. Stand aside, good Pompey. Oh! Great Hercules is presented by this imp whose club killed Cerberus, that three-headed Canis. And when he was a babe, a child, a shrimp, thus did he strangle serpents in his manus. Quonium he seemeth in minority, ergo I come with this apology. Keep some state in thy exit and vanish. Judas I am. A Judas! Not Iscariot, sir. Judas I am, eclipsed Maccabeus. Judas, a uh, Maccabeus clipped is plain Judas. Kissing traitor. How art thou proved Judas? Judas, I am. But the more shame for you, Judas. What mean you, sir? To make Judas hang himself. You have put me out of countenance. And so adieu, sweet Jude. Nay, why dost thou stay? This is not generous, not gentle, not humble. <laughs> Alas, poor Machiavus, how hath he been baited? <laughs> Hide thy head, Achilles. Here comes Hector in arms. So my marks come home by me, I will not be married. This cannot be Hector. He's a god or a painter, but he makes faces. The omnipotent Mar Mars, 
of the lands of the Almighty gave Hector a gift. A gift, nutmeg. A lemon. Stuck with cloves. No, 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 cloven. A piece. <laughs> the omnipotent Mars of the lands of the Almighty gave Hector a gift. The heir of the lion, a man so breathed that certain ye would fight ye from morn till night out of his pavilion. I am that flower. The mint, the mint. <laughs> that columbine. Sweet Lord Longavel, rein thy tongue. I must rather give it the rein, for it runs against Hector. The sweet war man is dead and rotten. Sweet chucks, beat not the bones of the buried. When he breathed, he was a man, but I will forward with my device. Sweet royalty, bestow on me the sense of hearing. Eek, brave Hector, we are much delighted. I do adore thy sweet grace's slipper. Loves her by the foot. Which you may not by the yard. This, Hector, far surmounted Hannibal. The party is gone, fellow Hector. She is gone. She is two months on her way. What meanest thou? Faith. Unless you play the honest Trojan, the poor wench is cast away. She's quick. The child brags in her belly already, tis yours. Dost thou infaminize me among potentes? Thou shalt die. Then shall Hector be whipped for Jaquinetta that is quick by him, and hanged for Pompey that is dead by him. Oh, most rare Pompey. Renowned Pompey. Greater than great, 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 great Pompey. Pompey the Huge. Hector trembles. Pompey is moved. Moratis, Moratis, stir them on, stir them on. Hector will challenge him. Aye, if I have no more man's blood in his belly, then we'll stop a flea. <laughs> By the North Pole, uh, I do challenge thee. I will not fight with a pole like a northern man. <laughs> I'll slash. I'll do it by the sword. I pray you, let me borrow my arms again. Room for the incest worthy. I'll do it in my shirt. Most resolute, Pompey. Master, let me take you a buttonhole lower. Do you not see Pompey is on casing for the combat? What mean you? You will lose your reputation. <laughs> Gentlemen and soldiers, Pardon me. I will not combat my shirt. Oh, you may not deny it. Pompey has made the challenge. Sweet bloods. I both may and will. What reason have you for it? Uh, the naked truth of it is, I have no shirt. <laughs> I go, Lord for penance. True. And it was enjoined him in Rome for want of linen, since when, I'll be sworn, he wore none but a dishclout, Jaquinetta's, and that awares next to his heart for a favor. <laughs> uh, God save you, madam. And it says? Welcome, Makade. Welcome, but uh, thou interrupts our merriment. Uh, I am sorry, madam, for the news I bring is, is heavy in my tongue. The king, your father... Dead? For my life. Uh, even so, my tale is told. Were these away, the scene begins to cloud. For my own part, I breathe free. I have seen the day of wrong through the little hole of discretion. I will right myself like a soldier. How prepares your majesty? Poet, prepare. I will await a night. Madam, not so. I do beseech you stay. Prepare, I say. 
I thank you, gracious lords, for all your fair endeavours and entreat out of a new sad soul that you vouchsafe in your wisdom to excuse or hide the liberal opposition of our spirit. It's over boldly we have borne ourselves in the converse of breath. Your gentleness was guilty of it. Farewell, worthy lord. A heavy heart bears not a nimble tongue. Excuse me, sir. Coming so short of thanks for my great suits are easily obtained. All causes to the purpose of his speed. And often at his very loop decides that this long process could not arbitrate. And though the mooring brow of progeny forbid the smiling courtesy of love, the holy truth is it with convinced. Yet since love's argument was first on foot, let not the cloud of sorrow ruffle it from for its purpose. Since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome and profitable as to rejoice at friends that newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Honest plain words best pierce the ear of grief. And by these badges understand the king. For your fair sakes have we neglected time, played foul play with our oaths. Your beauty ladies have much deformed us, fashioning our humors, even to the opposed end of our intents. Our love, yours, the error that love makes is likewise yours. We to ourselves prove false by being once false forever true to those that make us both. Fair ladies, you, and even that falsehood in itself a sin, thus purifies itself and turns to grace. We have received your letters full of love, your favors, the ambassadors of love, and in our maiden council, rated them at courtship, pleasant jest and courtesy, as bombast and as lining to the time. But more to out in this in our respects have we not been. And therefore met your loves in their own fashion, like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than Jeff. So did our looks. We did not quote them so. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, Grant us your love. A time methinks too short to make a world without end bargain in. No, no, my lord. Your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness. And therefore this, if for my love, as there is no such cause, you will do aught, this shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust. But go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There, stay until the 12 celestial signs have brought the annual reckoning. If this austere and sociable life change not your offer made in heat of blood, then at the expiration of the year come, challenge me. Challenge me by these deserts. And by this virgin palm now kissing thine, I will be thine. And till that instant shut my woeful self up in a mournful house raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my son's death. If this, this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. This and more I would flatter up these powers of mine with rest, sudden hand of death closed upon mine eye, and ever then my heart is in thy breast. And what to me, my love? And what to me? You must be perjured too. Your sins are racked. You are a taint with faults and perjury. Therefore, if you my favor mean to get, a twelve month shall you spend, and never rest, but seek weary beds of people sick. But what to me, my love? But what to me? A wife, a beard, fair health and honesty, with threefold love, I wish you all these three. Oh, shall I say thank you, gentle wife? No so, my lord, a twelve month and a day, I'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say. Come when the king doth to my lady come, then if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll serve thee true and faithfully till then. Yet swear not, lest ye be forsworn again. What says Maria? At the twelve-month end, 
I'll change my black gown for a faithful friend. That is my lady, mistress, look on me. Hold the window of my heart, mine eye. What humble suit attends thy answer there? Impose some service on me for thy love. Oft have I heard of you, my lord Verone, before I saw you. And the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks, full of comparisons and wounding flouts, which you on all estates will execute that lie within the mercy of your wit. Weed this wormwood from your futile brain, and there within to win me, if you please. Without the witch, I am not to be won. You shall this twelve-month term, from day to day, visit the speechless sick, and still converse with groaning wretches. And your task shall be, all the fierce endeavor of your wit, to enforce the pained, impotent smile. Twelve months. Well? Befall what will befall. I'll jest a twelve month in the hospital. I, my sweet lord. And so I take my leave. No, madam. You will bring me on your way. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath not chill. These ladies' courtesy might well have made our sport a comedy. Come, sir, it wants a twelve month and a day, and then will end. That's too long for a play. Sweet majesty, vouchsafe me. Was not that Hector? The worthy knight of Troy. I will kiss thy royal finger and take leave. I am a votary. I have vowed to Jacquinetta to hold the plough for her sweet love three years, but most esteemed greatness. Will you hear the song that you learned men have compiled in praise of the owl and the cuckoo? It should have followed the end of our show. Call them forth quickly. We will do so. Hola, approach. The site is Heim's winter. This there, the spring. The one maintained by the owl, the other the cuckoo. There, be gay. When daisies pied and violets blue and lady smocks all silver white and cuckoo birds of yellow hue do paint the meadows with delight. The cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men, for thus sings he. Cuckoo, 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 a word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. When icicles hang by the wall, and Dick the shepherd blows his nail, and Tom bears logs into the hall, and milk comes frozen home in pail. When blood is nipped and ways be foul, then nightly sings the staring owl. To who, to it, to who a merry night, while we see Joan doth kill the pot. The words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. You that way, we this way. Oh my goodness, thank you all. What a fantastic show tonight. All right, actors, I have moved us into speaker view. You can all bring your cameras in so we can run a quick curtain call. Just a reminder to our actors, we have several new actors with us tonight, which we are excited about. You're gonna all bring your cameras in. You're gonna all open up your mics. And when I call your name, 
please make some sound so that we can see you and not me anymore and you can take your bow. All right. Starting tonight as Constable Dull and the Marcad, we had Howie. Howie? Hi. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I enjoyed it. Hope you did too. As Jacquinetta, we had Alana. Hello. Thanks, everyone. It's fun to play a sassy gal. <laughs> As Parson Nathaniel and the Forester, we had Mark. Hey, everyone. Thank you very much. A blast. I can't quite hear you. Just a little louder. Oh. There we go. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> As Holophony, oh, Holofernes, we had Wendy. Thank you. Gratitude, appreciation, etc. As Moth, we had Joey. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. And as Don Armado, we had Kurt. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. As Custard, we had Kevin. Honorific Amilitude and Natatabos, good night. <laughs> <laughs> as Boyette, we have Michelle. Thank you, everyone. That was fun. As Mariah, we had Lily. Thank you. That was great. As Catherine, we have Rebecca. Thank you for all the fun, guys. That was awesome. As Rosaline, we had Kelly. Thank you, everybody. Donate to the center if you can, and please vote. Yes. As the princess, we had Emily. Hi, hey, everybody. Thank you very much. See you again. <laughs> As Longville, we had Michael. Thank you, guys, all. As Dumaine, we had Steve. Thank you. Have a good night. As Barone, we had Carl. Thank you all. Perhaps within 12 months of the day, we will discover the much lost Love Labors 1, and we'll have the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and as King Ferdinand, we had Jerry. Who has vanished? Yeah, they vanished. Is he all the way vanished? Okay, well, we really appreciate his performance tonight. We'll follow up with him, I'm sure. All right, and with that, I must say thank you from Living Room Shakespeare. Uh, I remind you that we have one more show this season. We're doing Halloween night. We're doing Macbeth. It's going to be amazing. We are starting at 10 p.m. I know we've been at 8 o'clock forever. We're going to start at 10 so you can do your trick-or-treating as it exists where you might be. And then join us at 10 o'clock for some awesome, creepy Macbeth. And then we will be taking off the rest of the year because holidays and insanity. And we will see about the new year. Keep in touch. Uh, <laughs> so again, we have appreciated having you here. Please donate to the center if you are able. Please vote and good night from Living Room Shakespeare. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.